Okay, guys, good afternoon. Uh, I hope you had a good week. Uh, as you all know, we're having a, the situation in Japan and the stuff they, that's taking place in the Middle East. Uh, and there has been some... Uh, Well, if uh, you are able to catch it, uh, genius, then that would be fantastic. Uh, it has been, there is a lot of things going on, uh, and there is, uh, it's a special market for us now to watch and see how things are uh, working out. And it is also a very important lesson that we all have to keep in mind when we are approaching the market and trying to trade is the key is that we should not, when we are approaching the charts and we are deciding to buy and sell, we should not have a preset opinion. We should not make our, up our mind that we are going to buy something or we are going to sell something based on uh, we need to look at the chart and base our uh, trading or trading decision based on what we see on the chart. Uh, one of the things that, for example, t taking the, into consideration the events that happened in Tokyo, like Genius was saying yesterday, it was easy money. Uh, unfortunately, yes, of course, I mean, it's uh, it's quite sad what happened and it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. And uh, But... As a trader, you have, again, if you're getting into the market, you have to approach this market uh, with one purpose in mind, is that to make uh, money. I mean, if unfortunately some mishappening is happening somewhere, some, if you don't take action and you don't try to make the profit, somebody else uh, will. Uh, having said that, just I want us to think together uh, about the situation. Now, assuming that we've seen, all of us, we have seen the devastation, of, assuming all of us have seen the devastation that took place in Japan. And so what would you expect to affect? Or what, what kind of effect do you expect to see in the uh, Japanese yen? Do you expect strength in the Japanese yen or do you expect weakness? I mean, common sense, I'm talking just in general common sense. Yes, we have volatility, but as a common sense, what would you expect if you have something that's happening like what took place? It's devastating the uh, economy, absolutely. Uh, Toyota, just as a company by itself, has shut down its factory because they don't have power to run those uh, factories, and they are losing $7 billion per day. Just a company as Toyota is losing $7 billion a day, and you can see all the export terminals in the ports have been devastated. You can see the cars that have been parking uh, dockside to be loaded on the ships, the tsunami came in and swept all this inventory out and destroyed all the uh, the cars that are being already sold and ready to be shipped. So we are all, as you expect, we are expecting serious weakness in the yen. And if you look at it, if you take a look now at the chart, this is actually what took place yesterday, we had this capitulation and it traded below the 81.65 and look at this massive selling that came down in taking it from 81.65 which was our selling point all the way down to 81.19 or 81, actually below the 81, it traded as low as 80.50 uh, If one had a pre, this is yen strength. This move, this is the chart for the dollar yen. This means that the yen has strengthening and the dollar has weakened 
versus the yen. And you can see this, this is a whole, that's a whole big figure. It's a whole 100 pips. And the, 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 the only explanation to this, and it's not necessary even to find an explanation, but this is what I was trying to always tell you, trade what you see, not what you think. I mean, when we were did our uh, trade planning session uh, on Saturday, this was this is how we mark our charts of what we're going to do. So we have our selling point below the 81.65. Uh, for any of the guys that were trading it, were traded Sunday, they would have been short uh, below 81.65, and our stop is at 82. But this was a massive move that took in, that moved quite quickly and. <clears throat> when you make a hundred pips in a, in the in the span of half an hour, I mean that's that's big movie. You should take, try to take the profit, and then uh, coming back above the selling point, this would have been the reversal, and you would have taken. So, based on the planning that we did, uh, let's move move away from the fact that is the idea, guys, that we do not approach the market with preconceived ideas or preconceived plans. You always need to have a, a trade on either side. You have to have a what if, where will I be short, where will be a buyer, and where will I be a seller. Uh, now, that misconception or that weakness that came in or the strength that came in uh, to the uh, yen um, is it going to be short-lived? Is this something that we can expect it uh, to last? For, and for how long? We really don't know. As we know yesterday that the Bank of Japan has pumped into the system close to two, about $183 billion dollars. And when they say pumped into the system, uh, there are several ways uh, of supporting the yen or uh, intervening in the currency market. One of them is outright intervention by going into uh, the money mar uh, in the capital market and actually uh, selling the Japanese yen and buying the U.S. dollar or going in and buying treasure, uh, Japanese bonds. And by doing that, they have to sell the currency and buy back, and they, they bring in more liquidity into the into the market, and therefore the traders will have to start using this money by putting it in other currencies or other asset denominations so that now they have cash in their hands, so now they need to use it uh, by investing it somewhere else. So with this, the way we are going to look at the market in the next few days until the situation develops and the situation uh, becomes clear, we have to be nimble, we have to be uh, aware of the volatility that's coming in and we have to be aware also that the financial or the central banks as a whole such as the uh, the BOJ or the FOMC uh, or the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England, all these now they are will be doing a concerted effort, an organized and orchestrated effort amongst themselves in order to stabilize the uh, currency. If you look at, and I'm going to show tell you how it, they do that in a minute, quite shortly, but if you look at this move, this is the Tokyo session, this is the overnight session, this is when the intervention took place. And you took a slide, a move, a turnaround move. I mean, the low that was done in the overnight is 80.60 or 80.50, and it pushed higher going all the way up to about 82.50. So you had 200 pips or 2 yen move from the low of the session within the span of a couple of hours, you had a, a two pip or a 200 pip move or a two, two yen move 
from one side of the range to the other. That is an explosive move. But if after that move, if you want to take a look over here, from that point on until, which is the 8230 approximately ballpark, until the open of the London session, you had the average range of that move was about 20 pips. You're looking at a range, that range over here is from 80 to 30. The whole, for eight hours, for a complete eight hours, the whole dollar yen has been trading in the span or in the range, a 30 pip range. And take a look at this chart, guys, and take a mental picture. This is the dollar yen, and this is the range. Let me narrow it for you a little bit. That is the range that has been, the market has been trading on the dollar yen for eight hours. If you take a look at the euro yen, you will see that as soon as it gets up, again, the same narrow period of time, the same narrow 30 pip range. So this is again, this is the euro yen, so it's a little bit, again, you just, the same narrow range, you got the explosive move when you got the intervention, and then this continuous sideways pattern for eight hours. The same thing with the pound yen. And that is one of the things that you guys have to do when you're going to be trading specifically the yen pairs, is that you have to be aware and keeping an eye on the other crosses. What's happening? I don't know where the date is. Uh, you guys can hear me? Because it seems that the, the chart has frozen. Okay, I'm just... Uh, no idea. Uh, I'll just give it a minute to, uh, to, to come up. But for the eight hours right after the intervention of the uh, Bank of Japan, the, the market has moved in a very sideways pattern for within a narrow range of 20, 30 pips. If you look at your screens, guys, it is identical as if, if you look at the dollar yen, if you look at the pound yen, if you look at the euro yen, if you look at the Aussie yen, all of them will be as if they ha you had a carbon copy of the same chart. No, I don't. Uh, it's not uh, it's not wise to do that. Uh, genius. Uh, this is th this the trading is not a game of. Uh, who is the fastest draw? Okay, who is the quickest gun, the guy with the quickest gun? Uh, the shorter the time frame uh, you trade. Now, you, you can use multi-charts. It's also inexpensive. We're develop I mean, uh, what you want to do, uh, genius, is you want to make sure that when you take a trade, you are having a good chance of making money. Uh, the smaller the time frame that you use, the smaller the time frame that you use, you can now going to be trading. You have to know who... The market is a zero-sum game. You're going to take money from somebody else. So, if you are going to be trading against somebody, you want to be trading against somebody that you can win, you can beat. The smaller the time frame, the more you're trading against computers, the more you're trading against al algos, the more you're trading against robots, and you might be, you might win one time, you might win two times, but eventually the robot, if he's doing the same thing over again, he's going to beat us at the end of the day because psychologically, uh, 
Uh, it's not the point of view. I agree. It's not. It's not a point of discussion. Uh, if you are able to trade uh, at a fine, all, all the power to you. Uh, the idea is uh, we're in this business to make money. We're in this business to, uh, at the end of the day, that we are all successful in making money. So I want to be trading only. I mean, for example, this morning I did not trade. I didn't uh, take any trades this morning, even though we had uh, a, 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 the euro was coming down versus the euro yen was moving very nicely to the downside. Uh, but it was just things were not comfortable things. The, the picture was not clear. The rules that I'm applying uh, that I follow are not uh, playing outright. So in this case, uh, I don't have to trade every single day. I don't have to force the issue. I'd rather step aside and err on the side of caution so that uh, I'll be making in the long term run, I'll be making uh, money. So, okay. Uh, you want to always just, I mean, let's talk about time frames. You want to have basically two time frames on your screen as a maximum two time frames. The first time frame that you have is at least you need to have a chart, the daily chart. Uh, and aside next to the daily chart, you need to be using the another chart with the time frame that you like to trade. So if you like to trade a, a one hour chart, so you look at the daily chart and that will give you the general direction or the bias that you have into the trade. And you trigger all your trades from the daily chart. And then the second, the chart that you'll be using is the one that, uh, I don't know, uh, Faisal, uh, four hours and, I mean, uh, if you if the idea is it doesn't matter because each trader is different of uh as long as you're comfortable with that then it's fine but if you're using 30 minutes again there is no one way to trade the market that's what makes it what's so beautiful about trading is that uh, all of us being independent uh, I like to trade the uh, 200 tick. Somebody likes to trade the 30 minutes. Somebody likes to trade the 15. There is no right, one who's right and one who's wrong. As long as you're able to make that money on it, then that's, that's fantastic. All what I'm saying is trading is hard enough. And we do not need to make it harder on ourselves. The smaller the time frame that you use, the harder the trade becomes on you. Why? Because you are competing now with somebody that is stronger than you. He has more money, he pays less commissions, and he doesn't feel or care about making money or losing money. He's in and out. It's a computer, and these computers are done by banks. So if I'm going to trade against these guys, I'm not going to be able to make any money. I can win one or two trades, but I'm not going to consistently be a winner. Okay, let's have uh, let's do a Q&A for 10 minutes until I'll, I'll get a third computer. Let's do a Q&A for 10 minutes, okay? Right, okay, so why don't you ask? Questions, guys. Let's have uh, some questions. Other side, other side. And we will also reschedule, of course, not. Okay, anybody has any questions? Okay, let's take the, the first question uh, is. Uh, do I use statistical calculations 
in my daily routine based on the open, high, low, and close? Uh, the short answer is no. Okay. The long answer is every price point on the chart, uh, whether it's the daily high, the low, and the close is of great importance. It is relevant. And you use that as a measure of how the traders are approaching the market. For example, let us say uh, you are, it is today is the end of the day at 4 o'clock, and you bought something, you went long uh, the euro dollar, okay? Now, where will you as a professional trader place your stop? You're long, you bought it, and now you're expecting that tomorrow the prices will go higher. So, no, no, don't play, it's fine. It's like the, uh, then you are expecting, when you take a long and you, you buy something during the day and you expect to take it overnight, well, you are going to look at either yesterday's low of the day, because that was the lowest price it has reached, and you might use that as a place to choose your stop, or you might use the two days ago, two days low, or a three days low. So you're looking one of the prior daily lows as a point where you place your stop. The reason you're going to use one of these is these are price points on the chart that the market has identified for us that it is not going to go below these points. Any price point above yesterday's low, any price point above two days low or three days low has been a price point that has already been attempted. The market has attempted to penetrate this price point and it has failed to go down. Therefore, you, if you're going to take the overnight session or you take the session, uh, a trade, uh, overnight, then you'll be using one of the price points that the market is telling you I'm not going to go down. That is as far back as you should be taking it in making your decision. Uh, there are, you can use, for example, so I would be more inclined to be using the highs and the lows much more importantly than I'm looking at the close of the day because the market is open 24 hours. Okay? Uh, the direction for the pound, uh, I'm not going to pronounce your name, but uh, <laughs> my, my dear gentleman, uh, the direction for the pound right now, the pound is by far the weakest of all the uh, major currencies. The, the dollar is weak, but it is kept weak because you, you can see on the chart that the dollar is primarily weak, but if you look at the pound, and uh, one of the things that we do, we plan our trades, as you all know, every week uh, on Saturday. One of the things we look at primarily is the, I will tell you in one second, uh, is primarily based on the hierarchy of the strength or weakness of every currency. And let me explain this a little bit. I want you to look, when you are buying the pound and selling the dollar, when you go along the pound dollar, you are going, you're buying the first currency and you're selling the other currency, or you're actually selling the, the second currency first, and with the revenue of your sales for the dollar, you're going to buy the British pound. So you are looking for to buy the strongest of the currencies because it's going to be moving up and you're looking at selling the weakest currency because you're expecting it to come down. Okay? So, uh, so uh, we're looking at 
buying strength and selling weakness. So in our work that we did last week, the dollar, as you well know, is, is weak. It is trading at the low. It's at the historical lows at the end of the day. But the uh, thank you. But the the second weakest currency is the the British pound. And with that, you're looking at the pound to be trading at or around the area where it's at right now, around the 160 level, but you can see it weakening. So you want to be looking, for example, at, I mean, if you look at the pound Aussie last Friday and the pound CAD and the pound has capitulated. I mean, we took over uh, 100 and pips over uh, on Friday on the pound. So I think the long-term future to the pound or the long-term direction to the pound is more negative or bearish than we are. Um, can you take reflect the order flow of the market of the pair? Uh, no, what reflects the, uh, the order flow for the market, let me see if the chart comes up on this one. Forget the radar screen, just the chart. Uh, if you look at uh, what it gives us the order flow, uh, okay, now, okay, got you. Now we have the camera and now we have the sound. Now, uh, talking, now I can talk because, uh, all right. This, guys, that this is what we call the market side. This market side is basically... It is in the foreign exchange. It is uh, whatever you want. You want to reschedule again, uh, mod? I'll, uh, I'll give them another one. Uh, whatever you like. I mean, uh, whatever I can do to make up for this uh, loss in time, I'll be happy to make it. Uh, the market side. This is basically uh, unique towards your broker. So, in the foreign exchange, for example, if you're dealing with FXCM. Uh, or uh, into whatever the broker that we have our uh, software hooked upon, it will collect the data, the flow of the orders. It's going to count all the trades that has gone on the bid and all the trades that is going on the ask. And based on that, we count. So if I show you, for example, uh, it's now we're coming to uh, 9 o'clock. I'll show you what I mean. So if I put this... Uh, absolutely, uh, Faisal. Uh, it's just that the, 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 uh, all, all, most of the trading platform does not work well with the Mac. Uh, they work uh, more uh, with... Uh, all right. So anyway, I'm not uh, going to mess around. I'm going to leave this chart and with this stuff. So anyway, this is counting every trick Every pick that goes on uh, that goes on the bid, it counts it as a, a sell, if you will, and it's counting every bid that goes on the ask. And if the price is above the market side, then we are looking to be buying the uh, the instrument. So, I, if the prices are above the market side, I will not be looking at selling it. And for example, this is the trade that we took. If you look at this trade, for example, this one's the one we had on Friday. And as soon as it broke from here, and you begin to see the distance between the market side and the the prices, you begin to see this distance expand. You see this? This distance like this. You see this distance expanding. That tells you that there is more selling than buying. And therefore, when we, I'll show you the trade that we took on, uh, on Friday. As soon as it broke, it was working, none of the computers are working. Yeah. Oh, this is, uh, Mike's, uh, account. Okay, it's not my account. So as soon as it doesn't make sense. Anyway, we took this trade all the way down until and you can see now how it diverges 
between the market side and the prices. The more that divergence is or the distance between them expands, the more you want to stay in that position. So if I am short and I see this distance expanding, then definitely there is more selling coming in and I will be staying uh, short. Okay, there it is. That's the trade. You see it now? This is the trade that we took. Uh, we sold it at uh, 159.60. That's on Friday when it broke. And we stayed with the trade until uh, 158.60. We took about 100 pips on that trade. And the reason is we stayed with it is because the distance between the market side and the uh, the price action has widened, and then we stay with it. Okay. Uh, what other questions you guys get? Which bank, in my experience, is heavily every single bank is heavily traded in a foreign exchange. Uh, the question is, which bank is in every single bank is heavily trading in uh, uh, in foreign exchange? This is one of the most lucrative markets they have. They are liquidity providers especially the prime banks like your cities, the Deutsches, and uh, these are what's known as liquidity providers. And the FXCM and the others, they calculate, they collect this data that's called data aggregators. They aggregate those data and they funnel it into their system. So one of the biggest revenue uh, for the banks is providing liquidity for the foreign exchange uh, markets. It's, uh, it's one of their biggest uh, revenue sources. Okay, no, I'm not going to upgrade to the uh, 9.0 uh, mic because uh, the we have to test first our software to see about all the changes that they have done in the upgrade. So, uh, and then we are going to do whatever needs to be done and then once we make sure that our software is working well on the 9.0 then we are going to upgrade but until then uh, we are going to stay with the 8.5 okay carlos asking what is the criteria at key levels well this is a brilliant question Carlos, are you one of the guys that uh, have been uh, uh, chosen for the short list for the turtles? Your name looks familiar, right? Are you one of the guys on the short list? No, not you? Okay. There's a Carlos also, somebody. We've got people from Spain, Mexico, China. Anyway, well, uh, you're the one that didn't apply. What can I say? <laughs> We had it on FX Street. FX Street was very kind to promote it. And so anyway, next year. Uh, the, the question is, what is the criteria for the reversal points? The first thing, uh, and you can see for the last, back since July of last year, it has been going all around the 159.80, and therefore, right here, that bounce is a buying point. But in the global picture of the pound, this is we're still in a downward trend. It hasn't changed its direction, so your bias to the pound would be to be trying to short the pound uh, and taking it. To, but this, while well, you see this going up like this, Jim, you're not going to short it here. You want, you're looking for an intraday. You look, so for example, let me back up one second, Jim. Somebody was asking me before what time frame somebody was saying four, four hours and, or, and 30 minutes and stuff like that. This is a good example to explain this. I always use the daily chart and the 200 tick. That's my preference and that's what I use. Uh, you can use the daily or the four hours over here and the the 30 minutes over here. It doesn't matter whichever you use. But now I have whatever my big time frame is, and in my case, I use the daily. I have this bounce up like this. It's bouncing from 159.80, and I have identified the 159.80 as a structural point, as a point of a decision that I make 
reference to that I use it in my trading, then at this stage of the game, based on this big picture, I am looking here only to be a buyer. That's why you want to use two time frames. If this is, this is, the move is up. In here, in the smaller time frame, I will look to take only long positions. So if, this is how you combine the two time frames, okay? So if my daily chart, my big scope, my big view of the trade is now it bounced above the structure point, then I am looking to be a buyer. So I will go down to the small time frame and I will only be going long. And this is how we do it. So what we do, first of all, on Saturday, we, I, we do our plan, we identify our points. So we identify, let's say, the 159.80 on the pound. The moment I identify the 159.80 based on the what we call the structure points or the significant points or the flipping points based on the chart, we take this number and we plot it, we do a horizontal line on the time frame that I trade. Okay? So I identified the 159.80 and I put that line on my chart. Now right here, we are above, we are above the 159.80. You see that? Right here at the right-hand side of the screen, Jim, you're above the 159.80. So I am only looking here to be a buyer. So I'm going to buy it. I'm going to stay with it. If I see this coming, I'm not going to take a short. I'm not going to put a sell order over here. I'm not going to say my selling point is 161. No, it has bounced above the 159.80. It is above the 159. So I'm looking to be a buyer of the pound. So now look at this move, Jim. All of you guys, look at this move here. It went to 160.40, and now it is coming down. It came down 20, 30 pips. Should I be looking to take this short? It might be a sell signal if you're using an indicator, a stochastic or a moving average or a, an MACD or whatever. This might give you a sell signal. Okay. If it gives you a sell signal over here, if you have a sell signal of an indicator, let me put an indicator here. If your big di direction trade is to the upside, and now you have a sell signal right there. Let's see here, for example. You see this sell signal, guys? See this sell signal right there? That sell signal? You see this, Bruce? Now, I'm above the 159.80. I'm above my structure. Then, what you do is, now I have, a, this is your 30 minutes. This is your short time frame. This is not your big time frame. Your big time frame is your filter. Forget divergence. Divergence doesn't work. Forget divergence. Forget all that stuff, uh, the rango, this. Divergence, uh, that's all subjective. It's all hindsight. But in the moment when you're watching it, trust me, the, uh, you're in the heat of the moment right now. If you go historically, you can see divergence and you don't see divergence. But at the moment of the trade, it's happening right there. It's not going to be beneficial. Let's put it to you, it's not beneficial. You can always see it very clearly in hindsight, and if you picked it up at the right time when you took the trade, it is much more of a, a coincidence, if you will, for a lack of a better term, forgive me, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but it is not going to be something that you consistently work with. Today, guys, let me finish this point and I'll come back to this, this again. So now, what you do now, if you have your signal from the daily chart is up, that you want to be a buyer, so this sell signal right here is you do not take the shorts. 
you filter this out. You say, I am not taking that short. But if you have now a buy signal in the short time frame, the signal in the short time frame matches the signal of the big time frame, you take it. So if you have a buy signal on the daily, you take all the buy signals on the shorter time frame. You do not take the, the sell signal. If your daily chart gives you a sell signal to the downside, you take all the short trades from the short term, but you do not take the buy signal. Your buy signals on the short time frame and the sell signals would be profit taking or stops. Now, you see it's, and therefore you see the move is not really coming. Now you have a buy signal here. You see this? This is your buy signal. I'm sure, okay, that is your buy signal right there. You might say it's divergence, you might say whatever, but this is a rule. I'm giving you a rule. If you follow the rule, then if, if, if divergence happens, then it's a blessing. Okay? Now you buy it from here, and, and you see, I would not take this sell signal. This sell signal, I'm not going to take it. I'm not interested in this sell signal. Because if I took, if you take this sell signal, uh, best or whatever, you're going to leave all this money. Look at all these sell signals. Look at all these sell signals, and the, the, the currency is going up. You do not take the sell signal, any sell signal here, is going to be for profit taking only and usually it does not work well. So for example, this, see how many divergence over here? This is one. This is a divergence. But if you took any sell signal or it, there is, you wouldn't have made money. Where, where, what do you mean not this time? What do you mean? You, you can take a sell signal to take your profits, but not to go short. It, it, it's it's very subjective, Dorando. I mean, what's more important for you? What would be more beneficial? If you focus your eyes on the charts trying to identify divergence, or you say, I really don't care about this divergence and I'm staying and taking the money all the way up. Which is more important? If I, I'll show you the trades, for example, for today. So, so, for example, right here, this is, uh, I'm just going to turn it on. I'm going to be from 12 o'clock. I want you to see now which makes a better difference. You want to take the trade from here and stay with it. I don't use anything. We never use anything in our trading, not even a moving average. As far as I'm concerned, all this stuff is a waste of time. Not one single indicator. You never see on my charts any indicator. We're, I'm a trader, I'm not an analyst, and I don't want you, any of you to be an analyst. These anal uh, moving average, uh, this blue line, this is uh, that blue line you mean? This blue line that you see on my chart is what we call the market side. Let me turn this off. And the the market side, oh, come on, give me a break, this stupid computer, is the only, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Never, ever use the SAR. That is the worst system in the SAR is called stop and reverse or a parabolic, guys. You never ever use this stuff because it does not. That is dangerous. Uh, I want you to look. Uh, if you look at all my charts, let me explain what this is first so that we don't. Uh, this is what we call the key line. Okay. And as you can see, it is session unique. It is not connected. This is where it ends in the previous session, and this is where it begins. And it is session unique. So, for example, this is ends over here, and then in the following session, it begins. This is the only tool. It's not an indicator. It's a tool that 
it, as I was explaining to the guys, it works that, uh, with your specific broker trying to identify if the trades are going as a buy or a sell. And it tells us that if the market now they are selling more than they are buying, and therefore I stay with that trade, okay? No, we don't use trend lines. The only tool that we use, guys, we use the most important technical analysis tool in our... Who puts a Forex signal? I didn't put any signal. More somebody's putting trade signals on the screen. I don't know if you approve of that. No, it's just uh, I don't want anybody, anybody to say I'm giving a sell signal. All right. So anyway, it is session unique and it's counting the the uh, and it tells us which side of the market we want to be in. Okay. The only tool that we use. The only technical tool that we use, guys, is the horizontal line. That's the only thing that you'll ever see on my screen is a horizontal line. All right? Uh, what else was the other question? Price action, support, and resistance. Okay, Peter. Uh, support and resistance... No, why should I? I have been doing this, uh, not even trend lines, Mike. I'll tell you why. We, a trend line, a trend line is a something that you put. Let me. Okay, let's. Since we're having some time, uh, let's say I'm going. I want to put a trend line. So we are all together here in the room. Let's say we're going to put a trend line. So I'm starting from here. Do you agree that this is a a good trend line. Who agrees that this is the right trend? Uh, first of all, I don't want to move from the screen because my computer is not working well. So if I move to the other chart, I might uh, lose the screen. So uh, next next week or next time we, or whenever they reschedule it, I'll be happy to do that. Or or this is the correct trend line, guys. Which one is which one is the right trend line? Is it number one? Is it number two? Or is it number three? Exactly. It is subjective. And what's we're happening is we are the only one that we see this line. When you put a trend line, when you put a trend line, Mike, on your screen, you're the only one that sees it. And it's only important to you. Okay? And so... I don't need the trend line to tell me that this thing is going up or where will it stop or where will it be tested because we have rules on how to trade. Uh, that's why the stuff that we're using right now, uh, Rob, the, what we call price behavior, is a new way to approach the market. And it is a new kind. It's the trading now that I believe is the, the way we trade for the the first century coming back to the uh, or what we're trading back into the future. You want to see how to be able to trade this market going forward. Every technical indicator, and I want you to see this. I'm going to do the euro for you guys in a second, but I want you to take a look at this guy. These are all the indicators there. See that? I saw a commercial today, uh, FX, FXCM was doing a commercial on TV today on CNBC, and they were saying that their platform has over 600 technical indicators, and you can use those 600 technical indicators for free. And it's true, they have 600 technical indicators. I swear to God. Why do you think you have six, yeah, exactly, you got 600 different ways to lose money? And I want you now to think if, okay, uh, Carlos, if, if I was a programmer or I wanted to have a, a, somebody who's not a trader 
And exactly, they create a God and they pray for it. And I want a, a, a programmer to write me a code so I can trade with it. The only the thing the programmer is going to use for him to code is these indicators. He's going to see what is the stochastic, what is the moving average, and he's going to try to develop a system based upon this. Now, you and I, we don't have the amount of capital these guys have, the banks have. We don't have the, our cost of doing business is much higher because they don't pay commissions. They actually, we give them the money because of all the money they take from us on commissions. And then if I'm go going to use the technical indicator that's already there, I might as well write a check and save myself the trouble. And therefore, that's why 90% 90, 90 of the people that are trading the market today, and it's a sad statistic, but all of you know that, I'm not making this up, 90% of the people that are trading in this market today and, and are losing, they are using the classical technical indicator. 90% of everyone that's coming into the market, the majority of the people that are in the market and they're finding it challenging and losing money is because they're trying to be either technical analysts or using technical indicators. Okay. If you are going to keep on doing the same thing over and over again, if you're going to insist on using the technical indicator, if you're going to insist on using the moving average, if you're going to insist on using the trend line, if you're going to insist on all of that, well, the outcome is proven that 90% of the time, you're not going to make money. So why do you want to continue to do the same thing over and over and over again and expect a different and that's why we moved away from that. I'll put the euro dollar for you. I hope it gets up. And of course, test them. Who's saying no? I'm fa Listen, it is, I'm happy that you find something. Anyway, let's do the euro because uh, the euro for us, guys, is a buy. Uh, we're, we're, we're long from the 138.80. This is our buy. Uh, our, these lines means our buy signal. So let me show you on the chart here. These are buy signals from the 138 right there. That's our first buy signal from yesterday. And we're staying with it. You're not, as long as it's above the 138.80, uh, uh, Jim, then you want to be staying with it for the, it's, uh, well, tape reading, yes. In a way, it is tape reading, but what is tape reading? This is a brilliant point, uh, Marco. What is tape reading? Let me ask you a question. I'm going to sh write something on the on your screen here. Let me put it on my screen. Assuming that you don't know that this is the chart for the euro dollar. If I go there like this, somewhere here, and I tell you 142, and I want you to tape read 142 right there. Okay? Is this a good price or a bad price? Should I buy or should I? Buy? In order to learn how, well, it's it's a, it's a guesstimate one. It's a guess. You're guessing that I should buy at 142. It's a feeling. You might be right. Don't go, don't get me wrong. You might be right. But what you do is, again, it's an opinion, Rob, and both, either of you could be right. But what we need to do is find out what is this 142 means. We have to find, if I'm going to do tape reading, then the tape is reading for me 142. Then I need to interpret that 142 to be in what? And the easy way we interpret this, guys, based on price behavior, is we say, this is part of the stuff that we do in the, in the is we say, okay, this becomes what we call a decision-making point. Listen to what I'm saying, Marco. We, this is going to be a decision-making point, and the price is above the 
142 is going to be, I'm going to interpret that, I'm going to read that as a buying signal, and my bias will be to identify buys, and I'm looking for points of entry to be a buyer. If it trades below that, then I'm looking to be a seller. Okay? And this, by using this as a reference point, Marco, you use this value as a reference point, then you begin to decipher and translate the date and decide which way you're going to go up or down. The other question, Meshka, about Murray math levels and stuff like that, I don't believe in any of that stuff. You need to know what you're doing and why you're buying and why you're selling. It is your money. It is your capital. You're not supposed to listen to anybody, including me, to tell you buy here or sell there. Because you need to know why you're going to buy here or why you're going to sell here. Mary Ma Mary Mori Math or whatever works sometime and sometime doesn't work. Fibonacci works sometime and sometime doesn't work. But the more times they work, they are more coincidence. And when you are using them and it works for you, you're going to be making money while you're testing it and you're trying to see if it works or it doesn't work, you're going to be putting a small amount of money on the trade. Then it's going to work and you're going to make some money. Your confidence is going to increase. You're going, the next time you get a Fibonacci level or a Murray Math level, you're going to add to your position because now you have developed confidence. Okay, Vicky, I'm going to have to hand it up. Then you're going to add more on your position. This will be the time it doesn't work and then you're going to get hurt. You need to know why you're getting into the trade and why you're getting out of the trade. Not because based on a, a Fibonacci number nor based on anything, okay? Uh, guys, we uh, uh, I just got a heads up that we need to, share, to close it down in uh, two minutes. I do apologize. We lost a great deal of time in the... Uh, but what I'm going to do for you guys because of this, if you guys, anybody that we did the indices and all that stuff, anybody that goes to the uh, website, I'm going to let them give you the password for last week trading session for free. So uh, as a gift for me, as an apology for this, uh, just go to uh, contact Mike in the, in the room, Mike at uh, Training Traders. And they will give you all the password for all the sessions that we did last night uh, as a gift for me, you guys. And next week, we can do it together. Okay? So thank you all very much. And I, so, I do apologize for you. And I do apologize to FX Street for the, uh, the computer and technology stuff. So thank you guys very much. And uh, all the best. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, uh, Maud. Okay, it's uh, put your email, uh, Mike. Yes, just send him an email and he will give you the password. Send him an email, he will give you the password, guys. All right? It's uh, type your email, Mike. Uh, Gallup, type your email, please. Or send it to me. Send it to, uh, to this and I will send you the uh, the password. Okay? Thank you very much, guys. Take care. Bye.